to welcome everybody to our webinar today. So uh, just a reminder, we've got our live chat off to the side. Uh, so if you click on the little uh, you know, bubble at the bottom that looks like a thought bubble, you can start live chatting. I'll be working the live chat today. My name is Justin Powell. I'm the Vice President of Sales uh, for Beacon. Uh, I also have Eric Zadrozny. Say hello, Eric. Hello, everyone. So Eric Zadrozny is the National Director of Sales for Beacon. And then I have Jim Kadena. Say hello, Jim. Hey, good afternoon or good morning, everybody, wherever you are. All right, Jim is the Vice President of Marketing from Service Finance. So we're going to jump on into growing your business with Beacon Homeowner Financing. So quick agenda, we're going to give a little Beacon update, talk to you about why financing is important, talk to you about how you can use it to win during this COVID-19 uh, time we're all in, what you need to do to get started, and then we're going to have some frequently asked questions at the end, but once again, feel free to ask any question you have over in the live chat. So here's a Beacon update. Our, uh, our number one priority remains the safety and wellness of our employees, customers, and the communities in which we live and work and raise our families. We're going to use opportunities like this to communicate any updates on the market as well as, as Beacon. But then in addition to that, you can go to BECN.com. There's a lot of great information there to just learn how to, how to um, survive during these tough times. So status of Beacon, well, we are open for business and ready to serve your building material needs. We are practicing social distancing and li uh, limiting uh, certain visitors to our branches to be sure you feel uh, comfortable. We're regularly disinfecting all the hard surfaces and commonly used surfaces in the branch. And we're working with our supply chain partners to make sure we've got ample product availability to meet your needs. Now our sales team, including both inside and outside are ready to serve. They do have some travel restrictions, so uh, they're ready to connect with you over call, text, email. They also have great video technology just like this. If you want to see their, their bright, shiny faces, uh, you can connect with them as well that way. And our mission, it's really important to understand Beacon's mission is empowering our customers like you to build more for your customers, businesses, community, and family uh, through world-class service and innovative solutions that we provide. That's what we wake up every day um, you know, wanting to do to help you. So now we're going to jump into why financing is important. I'm going to turn it over to Eric and Jim. Thanks for the intro, Justin. And so I want to make this perfectly clear. If you're a customer of Beacon that's on this webinar today, this is for you. Really, this whole thing comes to how can Beacon be a better partner to your business? And we've surveyed a lot of our customers. We've found around 70% currently do not offer financing to homeowners. So this first section is going to be a little basic, but we're going to try to set the stage on really why it is important. If you're not offering financing today, why you should really take a second look at it. So I'm going to pass the ball right now to Jim to give you some high-level stats about the marketplace. Well, great, Eric. Thank you so much. And uh, for everybody that's listening, uh, thank you for carving out some of your time today. Uh, speaking on behalf of all of the senior leaders at Service Finance, I do want to thank you uh, for spending some time with us today. Uh, our goal, quite frankly, is to make you a uh, more profitable, a uh, higher revenue business. Uh, if we can do that, uh, we think if you're using us for your financing uh, or you embark on a financing journey, uh, if you do that through us, our growth will come organically. Our focus is to make you uh, more profitable first and foremost. So some of the things that we know about financing, we know that 82% of homeowners in the U.S. have less than $5,000 in the bank. Uh, this is something that the Wall Street Journal came out with. This is not some uh, of us in a corner office saying, uh, let's come up with a number. The Wall Street Journal uh, came out with that. We also know uh, that uh, of the homeowners in the U.S., about 70% of them need or intend to finance a large purchase. Okay, that large purchase could be uh, a, uh, an unplanned uh, HVAC system, a new roof, siding, uh, windows, whatever the case may be. 70% of them intend or need to finance, and another 20% uh, are going to are planning on using a credit card for that purchase. So uh, look, add those two numbers up, and 
90% of consumers uh, are comfortable with and go and plan on taking on some level of debt for their purchase. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing. When you it, have and Jim, oh, Jim, and that that five thousand dollars in the bank that was before COVID nineteen, right? So who knows what they're dealing with right now? No, that's exactly right, Eric. I mean, the the uncertainty of today's economic world. Uh, I mean, it only plays into some of the things that we're going to talk to uh, here today. Um, so yeah, five grand was uh, actually about a year ago, according to the Wall Street Journal. So yeah, it, it has undoubtedly changed since then. And Jim, let me ask you a quick question. When you said that 82% of homeowners have less than $5,000 in the bank, and then you say you know, 70% intend, uh, intend to finance a large purchase or use a credit card another 20, what do you consider a large purchase? Well, it, you know, we, we tend to consider that $5,000 figure a quote-unquote large purchase. That is something that you know, normally is an unplanned uh, expenditure from the average household. Uh, and, you know, it just, it, it makes sense to kind of focus in on that as well. So, um, you know, as much as we'd like to think it, uh, you know, our products that we sell from a beacon building products perspective, most of those things are uh, unplanned in purchasing. They're a quote unquote grudge purchase. Uh, and it just, it, it makes the giving an invoice to a consumer of, $8,412, for example, it makes it a little bit more difficult to swallow. Um, what we also know uh, is that according to a Harris poll that was done last year, 72% uh, of contractors are more likely to get a phone call from a consumer when they advertise, when they make available a financing plan. Think about it the other way. One out of four contractors won't even get a call if they don't make it known to their potential customers that they have a financing plan available. Extremely and, powerful. And so, Jim, a contractor, because they offer financing, doesn't mean that's their only form of payment. If the, con if the homeowner says, hey, I want to write you a check today or pay you in cash, you can still do that just by offering financing. You just have another avenue that you can provide to them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hey, look, guys, I I'm a finance guy. Uh, I'm uh, but I'm also the first to say that uh, we're okay with cash too. Uh, that's actually a very uh, a very good payment method uh, as well. So yeah, it, this is just one more tool in your toolbox of sales closing uh, methods or uh, tools to have. So let's kind of just think about your own personal life for just a second. Um, how did you pay for your last car? Did you write a check for it? Some of you may have, and that's great. Uh, but what we know is that 98% of cars sold today use some kind of financing. Do you really think that there would be as many uh, Benzes rolling along the streets or Lexuses uh, or any you know higher end car uh, if they did not offer some method of financing? Uh, to their potential customers, and quite frankly, the advertisements that they put in place, those are intended to drive traffic into the dealerships uh, as well. One of the things I've, I've noticed and started to cut in is that I've seen on TV a lot of car companies now offering you know, six months, no payments because of COVID-19. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly right. In, in fact, Eric, uh, I know for a fact uh, I saw one uh, last night, 120-day uh, deferral. I think it was, uh, I think it was for. I, I don't remember exactly what the manufacturer was, but most manufacturers are offering a period of uh, deferred payments to the consumer. And honestly, folks, we're not any different. Uh, if we know that there is a consumer that has been impacted by COVID-19, either through illness or through loss of income, uh, a temporary furlough or whatever, you know, we're making this. It's the right thing to do by the consumer for us to defer their payments for a period of time uh, without incurring uh, any gains to their credit. I mean, it's just the right thing to do in today's world. Uh, so also, we look at it from a different angle. So we talked about vehicles. Maybe you know, those are a higher-end purchase. Think about your last, oh, I don't know, refrigerator or maybe TV. You know, did you have Best Buy 
they sell more flat screen, more big screen uh, TVs in the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, excuse me, the big game uh, than they do the other 50 weeks of the year. They do that to consumers like me. They advertise to me. You know, I, I don't. I didn't need a new TV. My TV was just fine. But boy, they sure made it appealing when they said, "Come get this latest new 65-inch TV. Put it uh, on your Best Buy uh, credit plan, and uh, you can get 12 months of uh, zero interest." That spoke to me, and so. By golly, I went and bought a new TV. I didn't need one, but I sure wanted one. They're appealing to the needs, not, or excuse me, the wants, not the needs of, of what they're doing there. So when you bought your new TV, did you take advantage of an offer like that? So we kind of set the stage uh, a little bit on, uh, you know, the current economic conditions um, and, you know, some of the driving forces of, those larger purchases. So you might be asking, so that's all sounds great. What does, what can I finance through Beacon Finance? Uh, so I, I guess the litmus test is this, pretty much anything you sell from, through your doors can be financed through Beacon Finance powered by service finance. Uh, really there's only one exception to that and that is an above ground pool. Uh, we will not finance that. So any roofing job that you have, be a planned replacement, uh, or an, uh, a storm-related event, any sort of siding, windows, solar um, additions to the house, uh, to the house, to the property, uh, remodeling, uh, kitchen remodeling, and bathroom remodeling is a huge uh, vertical. Uh, yeah, so, so Jim, so Jim, to that point, if you're an interior remodeler and you're buying from one of our branches that's got drywall, metal studs, and ceiling tiles, and it's, it's for a homeowner, right, on a house. That th those types of projects qualify for this, right? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Any improvement on an existing home uh, is certainly eligible. Even we will finance uh, uh, mobile homes. Now, the one qualifier for mobile homes is that we do ask that either, either the hitch is removed uh, or the tires uh, have been pulled off of the mobile home. Uh, some of you may be asking about, um, you know, things like, a commercial, a strip center, or a homeowners association, uh, a church, nonprofit, things like that. So just so you know, uh, later on this month, we will have a soft launch of our commercial finance options. I uh, can't share a whole lot of details here today, uh, but we will be publicizing those and HOAs, uh, churches, nonprofits, doctor's offices, strip centers, things like that, those will fall under our commercial sales uh, plan. Uh, and as of, uh, as of today, uh, all of these things that we've talked about are uh, eligible only in the U.S. Uh, we, we may come out with a Canadian plan later in the year. Uh, COVID may have something to say about that, but um, you know, our plan is to satisfy the, the, the ask. And we've been asked by uh, a couple of folks for a commercial plan, or excuse but me, if a Canadian plan. But if you are a Beacon customer from Canada, talk to your local sales rep. They could probably help you um, either way. Yeah, I certainly don't want to step on those toes, but uh, I get the question very regularly. Okay, so uh, that's been a, a little bit about, uh, you know, what do we cover and, uh, you know, just kind of why it's important. So let me ask you, or let me just kind of answer the question I also get, uh, you know, why is Beacon financing better than the other guys? Well, I'll just give you some real high level. From a pricing perspective, we won't be beat. We do not charge any credit card terminal fees, no merchant swipe fees, uh, no bank processing fees. Uh, there are no activation fees for either the contractor or the consumer. Uh, we do not ask for any sales slips when a loan is done. Uh, we don't stipulate uh, anything. Well, there's one caveat to that, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but we, we, we really don't ask for any sort of documentation. Most everything, I mean, if you thought that there were secrets in this world, there's really not. And most of the things that we see, uh, we have access to via public records, um, including you know, any sort of consumer completion certificates. Uh, we'll talk about that when we talk about how you get paid here in just a minute. So it's, it's extremely fast and easy to uh, transact at the kitchen table. 
Uh, now, I am also a realist, and I know that some of you may not have heard about service finance. Uh, we don't have the, uh, uh, you know, the name cash as some of the other, uh, you know, banks in this country, but that's okay. Um, we are a, so let me tell you a little bit about the history of the company. Uh, we are a nationally uh, licensed sales finance company. We're an approved Title I lender. Uh, we were founded in 2004, and this is important. We were founded by home improvement guys. Uh, they have a passion for service. That's why service is in our name. Uh, our founders have sold at the kitchen table. All of our senior executives have sold at the kitchen table. We've worked for manufacturers, uh, so we have a uh, deep understanding of the home improvement industry. Uh, we're not a small company. In fact, last year we funded uh, a little over $1.6 billion. Uh, we were on a trajectory for a little over $2 billion this year. Uh, we will still grow year over year, uh, but COVID had, is having a slight impact uh, in, our, uh, in our fund rate. And that's not unexpected. Um, the big thing is, though, folks, we leverage technology. We use technology for a fast, paperless transaction at the kitchen table or in a retail environment. Again, going back to what our founders, uh, the founding principles of the company, we want it easy for the consumer as well as the contractor to transact with, we, with each other. If we do that organically, we will grow as a company. Uh, we are the exclusive finance provider to some of the best known brands in the U.S. Guys like Linux uh, and their sister company, Allied, uh, Renai Water Heating, Abbey Carpets, um, Nextstar Network, uh, Service Experts, and of course, uh, Beacon Building Products, which we're incredibly excited about the partnership here. So Jim had a great question that came in uh, on the, through the Q&A panel. Uh, can, you know, if it's a residential home, but it's a rental property, uh, can, can the contractor offer financing on that rental property single family home? Yeah, no, that is a great question, and, and the short answer is yes, we will finance uh, improvements made on that, uh, that in quote unquote income property. I also saw another question come in um, through the chat, and please keep your questions coming through that chat about uh, building insulation, uh, attic insulation. Does that count as uh, home improvement? It sure does, a absolutely, and it's, uh, it's, it's not only that, it can be considered an energy efficient uh, upgrade or, or installation. So yeah, we, we absolutely finance uh, spray-in or uh, blow-in insulation uh, as well. So yeah, any types. Very good. So I think this next section, we told you why it's important, why there's a demand for it, gave you some analogies in your personal life, you know, cars and elect large electronic purchases. Let's talk about how you can offer financing to help win during COVID-19 going on. Here's some very basic statements that I think everyone would agree with in the climate we're in right now. Number one, homeowners plan to hold on to their cash. They want to minimize their financial exposure. Right now, it's a crazy, crazy world, so they want certainty in an uncertain world. Some may not have enough cash or credit right now to afford a necessary repair. And also, they want to keep their families safe and practice social distancing. What we're going to try to cover in this next section is how Beacon Finance and Service Finance together have answers that check each of these boxes. And the first one that we're going to go into is how you can use a Service Finance to provide a no-touch experience for your homeowners. Yeah, so as Eric said just a second ago, you know, they're very concerned with and with the social distancing uh, being uh, a very popular term today, uh, I did want to make sure, and we did want to make sure that uh, everybody knew that through Beacon Financing, uh, you can provide a true no-touch process. And how do we do that? Well, 100% of our entire process from cradle to grave can be done digitally and paperless. We have a mobile app, a best-in-class mobile app, uh, that 86-plus percent of all of our applications uh, come in through. Now, in fairness, I will say the mobile app was designed to be used at the quote-unquote kitchen table where you can take a driver's license, flip it over on the backside, 
scan the barcode that's on everybody's driver's license, uh, and most of the information that we need, about 75% of the information we need, is included in that barcode. Some things that are not included on there, things like the social security number, gross household income, uh, email address, phone number, uh, those things are not in there, uh, and cost of the job, obviously. Uh, but everything else is rendered uh, within that uh, barcode. Um, application, decision, and execution. Soup to nuts, that takes about two minutes. Uh, if a consumer's credit is kind of, you know, just right there on the line, uh, we may take another minute for an underwriter to actually physically put their eyeballs on the application and render a decision. The entire process uh, can be signed digitally, uh, either uh, on a tablet or mobile phone, a smartphone, um, or if uh, in, this, in today's world, uh, since these apps are starting to come in online, um, we email the loan docs to the consumer and they use DocuSign uh, and sign off on those documents. Again, decisions in one to two minutes, uh, takes one to two minutes. Uh, we approve, we decision and approve and fund the same day. We'll talk a little bit more about funding here in just a second. So it is a true uh, no-touch process, can be a true no-touch process beginning to end. And let me ask you this, is, it, is, is there a upcharge, additional fee, something for our contractors take advantage of this digital no-touch process, or is it just part of the product, part of the deal? No, you know what, Eric, it's just part of the deal, man. We continue to send out uh, updates to our mobile app. We do not upcharge, um, you know, any of that. So, that, again, that's just not, not the right thing to do. We're trying to make it easy for the contractor to transact and the consumer to transact. The mobile app is is just the it's the perfect way to do that. So no, we we don't we don't believe in those nickel and dimes. And Jim, just a comment, not a question, man. It's amazing that you guys have that technology, so the contractor doesn't even have to go in the home. Uh, they can just use all this on your app and and offer that no touch experience. That's awesome. Yeah, so it, it is pretty cool. And like I said, we update that all the time. So I did want to spend a couple of minutes really honing in on a couple of different loan plans that we have today. One of them is, is brand new. We introduced it uh, at well, it's actually one of the last conferences we were at uh, in February. Um, and, you know, <laughs> they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, what we found out is one of our competitors was in the audience at that uh, conference about six, eight weeks ago, uh, and just last week they came out with a similar plan to what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, so this is what we call our Plan 4632. It's a hybrid loan. It's a hybrid between two extremely popular different loan terms. One of them uh, is a true six months, no interest, no payment loan. And then right after that, it rolls automatically into uh, a low payment, low APR uh, term of either 60 or 120 months. Uh, so, and I, I mention it, I say it all the time, this is a true no interest, no payment plan. If the, cons the consumer does not have to make a single payment within those six months, they can make one balloon payment on day 179 and they will have paid zero interest to us. If they carry that forward, interest will then start on day 181, okay? It rolls directly into a 9.99% APR job, uh, excuse me, loan uh, for either 120 or 60 months. 120 month term is honestly, that is our most popular loan plan. That 9.99 for 120 is our number one loan plan throughout the entire portfolio across all the verticals in which we do businesses. Why is that? A number of reasons. Number one, it's 9.99% APR. That's not 10%. The consumer's mind is not saying that's 10%. They're still in the, quote, single digit interest. The second thing is, because we roll it over, we amortize it over a lengthy time, uh, the, the minimum payments required uh, after it goes into that term is only $132 for a $10,000 job. We tend to focus on payments that are $150 or less. If 
you can focus in and, and structure, and we help structure deals like this all day, every day. Uh, but if you can do that and keep a monthly payment less than $150, the consumer is much more likely to make a decision on the spot versus, uh, you know what, well, let me talk to my spouse. Uh, let's, you know, kind of, it's not a, it's not a objection. It's a stall. So we tend to take the stall away by making sure that we have loans that are consumer friendly. Uh, these are simple interest loans. Uh, there is no prepayment penalty. If the consumer decides to pay it off before the end of the term, in fact, our 120 month term, those payments are actually lasting between 48 and 58 months. So consumers are paying off between four and five years. So yes, they're paying it off and not incurring any penalties. The maximum loan amount on this loan, and in fact, all of our loans is $100,000. And I've kind of focused on the 10-year term, but we also have a five-year term, which is uh, plan number 4612. Uh, the monthly payment is slightly higher. It's $212 for every $10,000. Um, but again, uh, if, if the if the 10 year term uh, is objectionable or scares somebody off, we've got a, link, a, a shorter term available as well. And, and so Jim, uh, great, Jim, great question came in uh, through the Q&A. So is there a minimum amount that can be uh, financed through service finance? So uh, our minimum across all 60 plus loans is $500. Now that'll come into play uh, on the next one, but just so you know, on this plan 4632, the minimum loan amount we would uh, approve is $3,000. Um, so yeah, there you go. So I mentioned the next plan, which is uh, our plan 1012, which is a 12 month deferred interest uh, with a minimum payment. Now. For those of you in the storm uh, restoration business, uh, this is a loan that has just been an absolute home run. We term this the insurance deductible loan. So in some states, uh, the legislation is now an act, has been enacted so that the consumer has to provide a verification that they actually paid an insurance deduct uh, deductible. And that's not everywhere, but I know where I live in Texas, it came into play last September. But I go back to one of the early statements. A lot of consumers just simply don't have cash on hand. So what this insurance deductible loan does, it's for those exactly that, the insurance deductible on a storm repair. Uh, jobs from $500 to $5,000. Uh, we have basically stripped out all of the underwriting for this insurance deductible loan. What does that mean? As long as the consumer is current on their mortgage and as long as they are not in an active bankruptcy, we are approving those loans. We're actually approving 98 plus percent of these quote unquote insurance deductible loans. Very high approvals, very simple credit requirements, and it's the same cost as a standard 12 month with payment deferred interest loan. We are not upcharging uh, based on the low, if, if we take a consumer that has a lower credit uh, quality, uh, but they, they need an insurance deductible loan, we are not upcharging the contractor or the consumer for that lower quality. So it's very important to, uh, to recognize that as well. So, so a couple of good questions coming in. So um, if, if you go back, Eric, uh, so uh, jobs up to $5,000 on the deductible loan. Uh, so, so what if the deductible is higher than $5,000, Jim? Well, if it's higher, I mean, we do have a little bit of wiggle room, not a lot on this one, simply because, we're, again, we're stripping out all of the underwriting. Um, but if it does go higher, uh, we would suggest uh, and work with the contractor to maybe take a down payment uh, or just a, a cash payment for a portion of the deductible. Uh, that gets us close to, to that $5,000. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, um, our, our exposure is uh, greatly increased on this if we don't do a deep dive on the credit of the consumer. So we'd kind of like to keep it at that 5000 but we'll work with you on that. Yep, so, so that answers a great question, Stephen S. And then um, this is a, a question from Angie. Does the contractor initiate the application or does the homeowner fill out the initial form? Um, yes, <laughs> so so let me uh, explain that a little bit. Uh, so 
I am what you call an indirect lender. That allows me to do a few things that my competitors cannot do. Number one, offer a period of true no payments and no interest. Uh, it also allows me to go to those higher tickets up to a hundred grand where my, all of my competitors, I think the highest they go is 65,000. Uh, so as an indirect lender, uh, I am uh, counting on the dealer or the contractor uh, to initiate the loan application process. Okay, having said that, I also have a, a mechanism in place where I can send to an enrolled contractor uh, a widget uh, that they can drop on their website uh, for the consumer to go ahead and submit an application. Hmm. So that that's kind of a gray area in that the consumer is on the dealer's or the contractor's website, and but yet they're still initiating uh, the the loan application. So just so you know, since I mentioned it. Uh, when the contractor, uh, or excuse me, the consumer goes to the contractor's website and submits a loan application, uh, we will tell the consumer that, yes, we've received it, thank you very much, and somebody from uh, Joe's Roofing will be in touch with you within 24 hours. We do not give the consumer the credit decision. Instead, we send the dealer or the contractor the credit decision. We let them know Here's the co consumer that was uh, that submitted a loan application, and here is the maximum credit line that we can extend to that consumer. Okay, so I kind of that's a very long-winded answer. I apologize Love it. for that. Love it. I want yep. to be comprehensive in that. Yeah, so so a combination of both, but the contractor is obviously going to you know help the homeowner understand where that widget would be. So great one. I got a lot of good questions coming in here, easy relative to these. So I'm going to uh, burn through those. Is, uh, so is this, is this uh, presentation going to be sent out? Yes, we'll send out a follow up to everybody here. Um, so that's a very good question. And um, so this comes from a, a, a Michael uh, Meckham. Uh, Jim, is there a loan uh, origination fee on any of these loans? Oh man, that's a great question. And the the, the blunt answer is no. Um, Forgive my French, but hell no. That is just a nickel and dime thing that drives me crazy. We do not do any sort of uh, loan origination fees on the residential side. Great. And then uh, can the contractor choose which plan they want to offer? Because I know you got lots and lots of plans. Yeah, no. In fact, uh, we want the contractor to choose which one, which offer or offers uh, that they make available. Here's the thing. We've got over 60 different loans in the portfolio. Um, you see just a few of them there, some of the most popular ones that are there, but we've got twice, uh, twice again as many of those. We have, and we'll talk about it in just a second, but we have a dedicated dealer concierge that will be available to the enrolled contractor that can help them structure uh, a, a plan, a finance plan to offer their contract, excuse me, their consumers, um, they will see, they know what is a popular, what, what loan terms get traction, get attention uh, in respective marketplaces. Uh, and quite honestly, guys, we don't, I mean, we'd like for you to pick four, maybe five different loan terms, uh, be familiar with them, but have some level of cost certainty on those. Uh, pick plans that are uh, the, the dealer fee is you know comparable right around the same fees. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to pick for you. We're not going to let the consumer pick for you because there's no telling which ones they're going to pick. Um, and and we can suppress the visibility of, of some options uh, if you don't even want to give the sales reps visibility to all 60 different loan plans. And, and Jim, I know this is coming up a little bit later in the presentation, but there's a dealer concierge that each of our contractors would get assigned that would walk them through all of the different plans so that um, when you're making an educated decision on, hey, these are the three or four that we're going to lead with, you have someone who really understands financing that can help them with those decisions. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right, Eric. I mean, and, and they're familiar with the respective markets. That's how they're assigned geographically. So they're somewhat familiar with each of the markets. Um, they are finance guys, um, and, and they will help the, con the contractors structure those deals uh, according to what moves in the market. 
uh, one last question, and then and then I'm going to make a point, and then we'll keep going. So, uh, contractors asking, what is the dealer fee for Plan 4632? Obviously, we're fully transparent showing it here. So, 4632, kind of in the on the right hand side middle, is 4.5. Uh, so, that's a great question. And then I'm going to uh, wrap up and to keep answering questions. Just so you know, I'm answering your questions in the live chat. So, if you don't see my answer in the Q and A, we'll put it up in the live chat. Man, Jim, this is amazing that two things. One, you're giving a homeowner uh, a, an opportunity to not have to worry about interest or payments for six months in this crazy time. And then in addition to that, if, if you've got a homeowner whose house gets hit by uh, a, a hailstorm or weather event, man, you've got an opportunity for them to finance that deductible. I, I think it's just really great what we're partnering together to offer for their customers. Yeah, and, I mean, I would encourage you guys to look at, I mean, look at the calendar. It's April 1st, if you can believe it. Uh, under that plan 4632, they're not going to get a statement from me that says they have it. They're not going to get a bill from me until October 1st. And that bill's not going to be due until Halloween. I mean, that that's an incredible amount of time for the consumer to kind of get their finances in order. If they have been impacted by COVID, uh, hopefully things have somewhat recovered by then. Um, if, if it's a normal world, if we were if we were six months ago, uh, we would be talking about, well, okay, your year-end bonuses are going to come out or tax refunds or things like that. So it, it helps the consumer structure their finances, gives them time. We all want more time. I want more time. And consumers absolutely need more time when an unexpected event like this comes into their lives. And I'm showing this exact same slide that we showed a couple minutes ago for a reason. When we talked about you know, winning during COVID-19, I said homeowners want to hold on to their cash. They want to minimize their financial exposure. They want to have certainty in an uncertain world. They may not have enough cash or credit right now to do a necessary repair, and they want to keep their family safe. You know, the programs that are available along with the technology really makes this thing a no-brainer. You know, and again, we talked about why homeowners need this. Now we're going to talk about how do you get started. The process is very straightforward, very simple. We designed it that way. We don't want to make this a, a very complicated thing for you because there are so many benefits that you can bring to your business by offering financing. And again, it's a tool in your tool, tool belt. If a contract, if the homeowner wants to pay cash, fine, they're good. But if they go, man, that that I don't have thirteen thousand dollars. Now you can offer financing. You say, hey, how about this? We have a program we can apply, uh, set up an application for. If you get approved, then it's going to be six months of no payments, followed by nine point nine nine percent APR. That's why it's so important that at least you can consider having financing as is another tool for your business to use. And so Jim's going to cover how to get started. So Eric, if I could just make one comment on, on the scenario you just posed. So a $13,000 job, you give that bill to the consumer uh, for a new roof, let's just say, uh, and they say, man, I don't have that money. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just repair the section that needs to be repaired. Amen. And, and so now you can say, well, wait a minute. If we want to do the entire reroute for 13000 I can give you some of the best-in-class financing. The decision process takes about two, maybe three minutes, uh, and we can get started, oh, I don't know, day after tomorrow. How's that sound, Mrs. Jones? So it absolutely will impact the size of the jobs that you do, turn some of those repairs into full replacements. Uh, so the process is very simple. We have uh, some dedicated home improvement, tenured home improvement guys uh, that answer that phone call, that, that phone number, 888-277-0566. Uh, they, uh, like I said, uh, it is a dedicated group to the Beacon account, um, and they can answer any question. Uh, they can direct you to the enrollment process, uh, which uh, we have a dedicated Beacon enrollment uh, si uh, uh, site. Uh, and be sure and click that site, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. That process, it takes five, maybe ten minutes to complete. Once everything has been received, uh, give us 
48 hours, uh, give or take. Well, actually, no longer than that, uh, but it'll certainly can certainly come in less than that. Uh, and we will email you uh, the uh, the approval that you're an approved uh, Beacon homeowner finance contractor. You will get your uh, specific dealer ID uh, and some credentials to get you into the mobile app. Also, uh, when we send that email, uh, a person that is copied on that email is your dedicated dealer concierge rep. They can talk you through the mobile app uh, where uh, where you search for it in the apps in the uh, I what is it the uh, Apple Store uh, no wait <laughs> Google Play or the iTunes Store or whatever. However, it does. I always get those two confused. Um, they provide the training on the, some of the popular finance options and also help you determine uh, some of the options that are great in your marketplace. And any question or concern that you have from that day forward uh, can be directed, should be directed to that dealer concierge. Uh, we like to look at them as, as, uh, as your SPOC, your single point of contact going forward. Jim, that, that's just so exciting because I know a lot of people are, are overwhelmed by financing just because they don't understand it. But the fact they get a personal concierge to help provide training and, and answer any questions, that's huge. Uh, it is huge. And, you know, I don't expect, I don't want uh, anybody listening that's participating with us, I don't want you guys to be finance professionals. Uh, I, I want you to be comfortable offering uh, a way for the consumer to sign on the bottom line. Be comfortable with three, four, maybe five different finance plans that we can help you and coach you through uh, which ones to select. Uh, so I'm sure you're thinking that that, sound, that all sounds great. What do I need to provide to get going? Well, on that, uh, you know, that email, or excuse me, that website address is very important. I want you to go there. Go there because we have streamlined the enrollment process for Beacon contractors. Uh, we will ask you to provide a few basic things, your FEIN number, a copy of your contractor's license. Now, some of you, <clears throat> excuse me, some of you may say, my state doesn't require a contractor's license. Okay, if you have a business license, send us that. Or you may say, well, my state doesn't require a business license. Okay, that's fine. Every state requires some sort of registration as a business within that state. If contracting license is not required or a business license is not required, send us a copy of your state registration and we'll be good. Uh, we pay you for loan proceeds through the ACH automated clearinghouse uh, process, electronically funding these things at no additional fee. Uh, so we do ask you to send us, to uh, take a picture of and uh, send us a copy of a voided company check. Uh, we do get auditors from the Fed, uh, the federal regulators come in about once a quarter uh, and they randomly select files and they want to make sure that we have a voided company check for every enrolled contractor, regardless of the association. So we ask that. We also ask for you to tell us what the stated warranty is for your labor what's your labor plan, and also the most commonly installed product that you sell. Uh, we ask for one credit trade reference, uh, not Beacon. Uh, so if you, um, uh, Ford Motor Company, for example, if you purchased a vehicle and you bought it on credit, send us that information and we will, uh, we will use that as, um, uh, as the credit reference, and then some general business information on the owner or the principal. And this is this goes back to 2001, uh, part of the Patriot Act uh, that was enacted after the 9-11 attacks. Uh, the portion that is know your customer uh, is what it's known as. In essence, we're given a, an open checkbook uh, to the business, uh, so we're required to have some basic information on who the business owner is. Awesome. So, so I thought so two questions that came in. One was uh, someone was asking for the enrollment website, so I'm going to put that back on. And just not know if it's possible if you could uh, copy that and put that into the live chat. Yeah. Then, so, go ahead. Oh, and there was one more question that caught my eye. So, once a contractor starts the project, sometimes you see uh, something that you did not expect, and there's a change order that needs to be put in place. How does uh, the financing program handle a situation like that? Okay, and that's a great question. And, um, you know, we see this a lot, uh, quite frankly, we see a lot in some of our flooring business because a lot of the things, and same thing with roofing, a lot of the 
uh, unforeseen issues are just hidden, either hidden by the existing roofing or the carpet. Once you pull the carpet up, you see some subfloor that needs to be fixed. So it's a very simple process. And guess what, guys? Your dealer concierge can help you with this. So if you get to the job site and have your $13,000 job and you see that uh, some of the, uh, you know, there are some uh, issues that need to be addressed before you can lay down the new roof and the 13,000 job has now suddenly become thirteen five or $15,800 or whatever. Very simple. Pick up the phone, contact your dealer concierge. Uh, they will increase the loan amount. And uh, now we do have to have a new loan document signed by the consumer. But as we addressed a minute ago, that is a very simple electronic process that they can either do right there on the on the tablet uh, or we will email the doc just like we do before via DocuSign. It's a so that's great, so that, that's a great answer. So both Angie Rank and Brent, Brent Robinson, that is the answer to your question. Yes, you can by communicating to your dealer concierge, you can you know, add on those extras. Yeah, so I want to be very clear though, that goes for either an increase in the loan amount or a decrease in the loan amount. Because here's the thing, guys, if you think about it, whatever the document, the loan document says is the loan amount, that's what I'm paying the contractor. And that's what I'm going to expect from the consumer. So even if the loan goes from 13,000 to 10,000, for whatever reason, I do need to have new loan documents fired for that particular thing. You might think it's a little counterintuitive, but if you think about it, it does make sense once you look at it from a consumer's perspective. I don't want to end up charging them 13 grand for a $10,000 roof. Yep, and then a couple others. So go back to your next slide, Eric. Um, so Alicia Scott said, hey, what does it take uh, for a company to be approved? So fill out, uh, click on the link on the previous screen, and then you send this information in. Alicia, that, that's for you. Uh, and then another question, and I, I think I got the answer to this one, Jim. I'll take it. I think it's easy. Do I always have to use the app, or can me personally as a contractor or the homeowner use a desktop version of the service finance website, uh, you know, um, portal? And, and, yes, you can do, do it on an iPad through the app, or you can use a desktop, and the homeowner can do that at their own home. Correct, Jim? Like the contractor doesn't need to be there to access the service finance uh, portal? Yeah, that's correct. And and the other part of that, uh, Justin, and, and that's a great question, whoever asked it, um, some folks prefer to talk to a live human. So we have a call center, a consumer, or excuse me, a credit center uh, where the dealer can call in and just provide the information to our uh, credit center rep uh, and get the, uh, get the credit decision that way. Just because I talked about the mobile app and the fact that it's 86 plus percent of our deals are submitted that way does not mean that that's the only way to do it. And I and, and, and applied that. Yeah, that's how I should. And Alicia asked another awesome question. So it sounds like, Alicia, you need to register at the link because you need to sign up. <laughs> you're asking a good question. Uh, but you need to be in business for a certain amount of time uh, to qualify for this program. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the hard and fast rule is, uh, is one year in business. Uh, now, as we know, there are exceptions to every rule. Uh, so one of the most popular exceptions is somebody uh, that's six months in the business, uh, they used to work for this other company, uh, they basically ran the business for an absentee owner, uh, and they decided to go out on their own. If they can provide us a little bit of background on themselves, as long as they didn't run the other business into the ground, uh, we usually accept things like that. Hard and fast, a year, uh, but don't let that shy you off from applying. Yep. And then, then the, the, the conspiracy theorist question we always get, so, so if I'm a contractor and I'm a service finance dealer, the homeowner gets approved, can they use another contractor that's not in service finance to, to use your financing? Oh, man, that, that is a great question. So first and foremost, my partnership is with the contractor. Uh, if the consumer gets approved for a loan from me, it is through that particular contractor. If that consumer says, well, I don't want to use them for whatever reason, number one, we, we tend to think we owe it to the contractor to let them know that something happened and the consumer doesn't want to use them. But if they don't use the, our loan through that contractor, then we void the loan. And if they go to another contractor, they'll have to reapply. Great.
So, you know, we've talked a lot about dealer concierge, and that is a tremendous uh, resource available. They're available, uh, you know, the hours are 7 a.m. to midnight Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Um, Saturday, uh, it's, uh, I want to say, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., or excuse me, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. I said that wrong again. 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturdays, and then on Sundays, it's 1130 odd, uh, but 11.30 to 6 p.m. on Sundays, and those are Eastern times. That They're available to you all the time. Uh, we also have a, a field sales organization uh, that uh, these, this is made up of home improvement guys, not necessarily finance guys, but home improvement guys that know what it takes to sell at the kitchen table. Uh, these guys can provide the personalized training for you and your sales staff. Um, they help you with onboarding uh, of, of new sales reps. Uh, dealer concierge can also help with onboarding of office staff. You know, turnover is uh, unfortunately a little bit high in some areas, um, and that's what they're there for, uh, to walk any new folks through the dealer portal, how to get paid, and things like that. Uh, so uh, our, our, our sales organization is there to support you. And the one thing that I want to point out, you don't have to do this face to face. So just like we're doing a video conference, it's just as simple as doing the exact same thing right now. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And I'm totally transparent. Uh, so I provide uh, the map as you see for our field sales guys and their direct cell phone numbers. Uh, so reach out to them if you have any questions. Um, you know, the, the, and like uh, like a question was asked a little while ago, this entire deck will be provided to you. So you'll have this. You don't have to take a picture of this or anything. That this will be provided to you uh, for your future use. Uh, yeah. And of course, oops, sorry, another another great question. Sorry to cut you off there, Gabriel. Uh, Gabrielle asked, um, you know, if, if the homeowner defaults on the loan, is the contractor at risk from exposure on that defaulted loan? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and, and, and I'll just go back to one of the things I said early. We want to make this easy for the contractor. Uh, we want to make it fair. These are all non-recourse loans. What does that mean? Well, if I approve a consumer, and by the way, folks, my approvals are good for a year. I can, uh, I can execute a loan document a year from now for a consumer that applies today. Um, but they are, once I approve that consumer, uh, and the job is done, uh, then any risk then becomes my problem. It's my, uh, it's my responsibility. Uh, I will not come back to the contractor and say, this particular consumer flaked out for whatever reason, I need you to repay that loan. No, I will never do that. Um, so I, I hope I was very clear in my response there. Yeah, so Gabriel, there is no uh, risk in that. And then the only license you need is, is if you're in a state that requires a roofing contractor license or a general contracting license, that's all the only license you need um, to, to be approved by service finance. Okay, time out there. This person must be either in Florida or Colorado. Uh, and I want to ask you to affirm or deny that, but in Florida and Colorado, those states require a retail seller's license. Uh, that is, quite frankly, a simply a revenue generating device for the state. Service finance has no input or impact on that whatsoever. We just have to abide by it. So if you're in one of those states, contact the respective regional sales manager. Uh, they are quite well versed in how to obtain that uh, particular retail sales license. Got it. So there have been some awesome, awesome questions, and we're, we're getting close here to the end of it. There's a couple frequently asked questions we're going to cover real quick. And then once we get done with those, we're going to stay on for just for a couple more minutes and, and continue to answer any questions that you might have. So, Jim, yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is the number one question you get. When do yeah. I get paid? Yeah, Eric, this is the first and second most popular question I hear <laughs> every day. When do I get paid? How do I get paid? So, folks, it's very simple. Uh, I pay you within 24 to 48 hours of you requesting funding. In fact, if you request funding by 3 p.m. Eastern time on any particular business day, uh, 99 times out of, out of 100, I will fund that loan before 6 p.m. Now, what I 
cannot control is what bank you use and when they do their sweep uh, of, of uh, their debits. So it could be the next day before dollars are in your account. It could be the day after that. Uh, but 99 times out of 100, I will fund those deals that same that same day, as long as it's before 3 p.m. Stand, uh, Eastern time. Awesome. All right, next question. Do you call my customer before paying me? Yeah, uh, another very popular question. The short answer is I do not hold paying of a contractor pending a live conversation with the homeowner. I do not uh, rely on a phone call for customer verification or identification. I do not do that. Some of my competitors do. The only caveat to that is a, it's, a, it's, it's slightly different for our solar installs uh, where we do require a live conversation, uh, but we are very diligent in our attempts to contact that consumer so we can make sure that we fund the contractor expeditiously. All right. What documentation is required for a loan? Now, this would be documentation from the homeowner, I'm assuming. Well, either from a homeowner or from the, from the contractor, and let me kind of break it up like that. So from a con consumer's perspective, uh, I do not require any sort of proof of income, proof of homeownership, uh, any sort of uh, documentation like that. Uh, from a contractor's perspective, I do not require a copy of the work order. I don't ask for any of that stuff. I said it earlier, most of the things that we use to render a credit decision is a matter of public record. Uh, if I ever have an issue uh, and need a copy of a work order from a contractor, which I can think of twice in the last two and a half years that we've needed to do that, um, I just reach out to the contractor and ask them for those one-off. Uh, it makes far more sense to do that than require it up front. Uh, the only difference, or excuse me, the only caveat to that, and here again, is for, is for solar installations. Um, when the consumer, uh, excuse me, when the contractor requests funding, uh, I might ask, might ask for a copy of the PTO, which is the Permission to Operate uh, certification from the state or from the uh, uh, um, inspector. Very, very cool. simple, very easy, very basic. So, Justin, uh, those were our kind of stage questions here because they were the most frequently asked. We want to get those out of the way. Was there anything else that came in through live chat that we could uh, have answered? Yeah, just to be respectful of people's time, why don't we finish our slides and then we'll answer a couple last ones uh, to give people who want to hang on after. Yep, so, sounds great. Do you want to take this one? Sure. So, Beacon is committed to supporting your business contractors. We're open and ready to serve you. Uh, we've got homeowner financing that helps your clients manage the monthly payment with those e-sign capabilities we talked about where you don't have to go in their home. It's a no-touch experience. That, that six months, no interest, no payment loan gets them down the road so they don't have to worry about anything into the fall uh, and get, get beyond this COVID-19 crisis. We also offer Beacon Pro Plus and have upcoming seminars on that that can help you manage your uh, work remotely, both uh, safely and remotely. And then we have Beacon 3D Plus a 3D estimating tool that provides a no-touch selling experience for your clients. We'll have seminars on that coming up as well. And the so whole, the, every, every reason that we're doing this is at the top here. We're trying to support your business. We had homeowner financing, Beacon Pro Plus and Beacon 3D Plus a couple months ago, and there's customers who were taking advantage of them and really liked it. But right now with COVID-19, you have to adjust your business. Homeowners are going to be tight on their pocketbooks. They're going to be freaked out about making a big purchase, even though they might need it. Financing is going to help. Uh, Beacon Pro Plus, the free service from Beacon, where you can place orders, do your invoices, pay your bills, um, uh, track your deliveries. Um, Beacon 3D, again, the no-touch selling experience. These are all things that can help you today. And really, the only thing you have for Beacon is we just want you to be successful. And this is kind of what it comes to. And Justin, you can please cover this one. Yeah, so, so we are the Beacon Nation. When we say Beacon Nation, that includes you uh, and your families, your customers, their families, and the Beacon employees and our, our families, but also our vendor partners as well. So together we know we are better. And like Eric said, we've had these resources for the last couple of years. We've been building this so that we're ready to help serve you when you need it the most. 
So just know we're here for you. And Eric's going to talk to you about a couple of other trainings we've got coming up before we go to the live chat. Yeah, so just like we did today, we have this exact same seminar Friday at noon. So if there's someone else in your company or if you're friends with another contractor that you think could take advantage of it, please have them go to go.decn.com forward slash webinar. But we also are going to have training seminars uh, next week on Beacon 3D+. Plus. We have some training coming up around TriBuilt, Beacon Pro Plus, and Job Nimbus. I know there's a lot of dates here and topics. You don't have to worry. Number one, we're going to send out this presentation to you. But number two, any training session that Beacon is going to be offering is always going to be available at go.becn.com forward slash webinar. They're always going to be free to attend. And we're not going to try to just push product on you. These are all going to be training sessions on how Beacon can help your business. We just want to help get the message out so that you can see the value, you can have your questions answered, and then you can go and, and, and take on COVID-19 head on. That's what we're trying to do. We also are gonna send this presentation out. Uh, Jim, who was from Service Finance, and did, I think an excellent job today. That's his cell phone, that's his email, and Justin Powell and myself, who work for Beacon as sales leaders, we wanna give you our cell phone and our email address as well. And if there's any questions that you have about financing, we're happy to answer those. But maybe there's something else that you just need help with. Feel free to reach out to us. We are Beacon Nation. That's just not the Beacon employees. That, are, that is our customers. That is our families. That are the communities that we live, work. So we want help. So we're trying to make ourselves as accessible as possible. This is the best way to reach us. And so with the last couple of minutes we have here, uh, Justin and uh, uh, Jim, why don't we try to answer a couple more questions, then we'll just we'll knock this thing out. Yeah, Jim, here's here's uh, here's one from Gabrielle again. Once again, sounds like she's somebody needs to sign up, register today, because great question. Regarding tax filing, does service finance need to or provide a 1099 at the end of the year for these contractors? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever been asked that question. So, Gabrielle, uh, virtual high five to you. Um, the short answer is no. Uh, we do not provide any sort of tax documentation like that. We, we're not required to, and uh, this is these are these are loans for a job uh, that was properly financed. So no. Great, great answer and great question. All right, another great question. This one comes from Angie again. Angie, awesome question. Sounds like you need to sign up. Uh, so Angie typically on her cash deals is doing one third deposit, one third at start, and one third at uh, upon completion. Should this be the same when she starts offering financing, or does service finance uh, have other processes or suggest another model? Okay, uh, interesting. So um, I'm going to give you a two-part answer to that. So um, if you wanted to, just as a normal company policy, if you wanted to ask for a deposit, uh, that is entirely up to you. Um, I would just then be uh, financing the balance uh, of that. Now, part two of this question, of this answer to that question, which is a great question, by the way, uh, is this: uh, we uh, we can work with you on what we call a progress pay or a stage funding deal. Uh, now, what that would uh, entail is uh, we would. Uh, you know, we would take this offline. Uh, there's some other uh, qualifications that go along with that, uh, but we would be able to fund you, the contractor, 50% of the job uh, upon loan application or job acceptance, um, and then we would, uh, you know, we would then fund you the other 50% when the job is done. So we split it up 50-50 uh, in, in areas like that. Now. Here's, a, here's one thing to think about, though. With our stage funding, again, the clock for us does not start until the job is done. So if we pay you $5,000 uh, on the you know, date of a job proposal acceptance, number one, that helps you uh, with cash flow, helps you get materials, help general operation expense, and then the job isn't done for six weeks, let's just say. Uh, well, six weeks from now, I pay you the other five grand, uh, and then I start the clock for the consumer. Now, that's very important to note that in that in that inter, uh, intermediate six weeks, 
the consumer is uh, is not impacted whatsoever. I do not accrue any interest. I do not require a payment. I don't. Basically, the consumer is not even a party to the deal yet. Okay. Hope that makes sense. And I point that out because a lot of my competitors in their quote unquote progress pay deals, the clock starts the minute that first draw is made. Yeah, I'm going to answer it a little differently and agree or disagree. So I think, um, you know, I would say to Angie, you do not have to any longer collect deposits because if you want to, and that's just a traditional home improvement job or roofing job, that's a couple of days, service finance will pay you 100% of the contract price 24 to 48 hours after the job is complete. Um, but, but a lot of times you requiring that third deposit, you know, could be keeping you from getting contracts, right? I mean, a third of a deposit for a $20,000 roof is starting to get uh, you know above that $5,000 threshold. So point being is when you offer financing, you don't need to require that deposit anymore because you're going to get paid within 24 to 48 hours of completing the job. Is that correct, Jim? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair. And uh, I apologize for uh, going on and on about that, but that's a that's an accurate statement, Justin. So, so but when you sign up, because because you got to sign up today, Angie, that's that's the big thing I need from you. Um, the, the, that dealer concierge is going to educate you on the whole sales process and how it might change. Uh, and then last one from Michael uh, Meckham, is there any digital pieces he can add to his website from Beacon or Service Finance and include in a sales pitch or marketing? The answer is yes and yes and yes. Uh, we are here through the dealer concierge and through Beacon to help you, um, you know, with whatever you need uh, to, to improve your sales presentations and market that you're offering <clears throat> financing. Amen. Good. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. All right. So, what, so what we're going to do uh, again? Thank, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, I have your email address if you participated in the webinar. And so later today, I'm going to send you out the slide deck. Um, also, um, information on how to enroll online in the uh, 800 number. Uh, if you have additional questions, feel, feel free to use us, and uh, we'll uh, try to service your business the best we can. Again. We have all these awesome webinars coming up in the next few weeks. Um, always go to go.becn.com forward slash webinar to take advantage of those. If you like this training and thought we were nice guys, sign up again because we love doing these and love having you and, and, and love learning together. Thanks, everyone, for the time. Appreciate you.